science does not know what reality is. In this discussion, I would like to highlight the degree to which science does not know what reality is. Once we open our minds to how open-ended this problem is, we can start to imagine different possibilities. Not only is it possible to doubt the nature of reality given modern science, it is also the most logical conclusion to do so. Two of the most inextricable questions in science are the following. One, what is consciousness? And two, what is a universe? Currently, science has no known hypothesis that would definitively answer either of these questions. Even though it might seem like current methods can eventually answer these questions, that remains a speculation. All attempts to understand these two domains have raised more questions than answers. Since these questions are currently unanswerable, it demonstrates that, one, we should have a healthy skepticism about the nature of reality. Two, we should have more humility about whether the current physicalist approach will ever answer these questions. In three, we should be more open-minded to non-linear and non-physical types of analysis, the default model of reality. Let's first consider the traditional view of consciousness and the universe. So one, the universe contains all physical objects. Two, your brain is a physical object contained in the universe. And three, your consciousness is generated by the brain. In this model, you can think of three boxes, each contained within the other. The universe contains your brain and your brain contains your consciousness. These are pretty simple concentric boxes, nothing to see here, except the problem is that science has no clue what two of these boxes are and barely has a grip on the other. In a diagram, it looks like this. The simple question here is, if all lived experience is composed of these three boxes and we do not know how to define them, then how can we be so certain about the product of their combination? Any lived experience that has ever been experienced must go through these three boxes. If you remove any one of these three boxes, then lived experience simply ceases to exist. To correctly appreciate what reality is, we would need to fully understand each component. We can replace any one of the three boxes with various possibilities since they're all uncertain. So try replacing the universe with a simulation. Or replace your brain with a transceiver. Or finally, what if consciousness really was just a dream? Consider how different your comprehension of reality would be if even one of these boxes was replaced. What is consciousness? It would be impossible for you to perceive something outside of your consciousness. Consider the case of someone undergoing anesthesia. Once their consciousness is turned off, they have no perception of reality, even though this person's basic motor functions are still operating. Every person must interface with reality through this unknown substance known as consciousness. But what exactly is this consciousness through which we interact with reality? The hard problem of consciousness is a term used to describe the conundrum of trying to link physical brain activity with subjective sensations, feelings, experiences, and thoughts. While we can show the light frequency associated with the color red, we cannot reproduce the subjective feeling of seeing that color. We can have people look at the color red or even trigger neurons in the brain to fire, but we cannot reproduce the resulting experience or qualia of what it feels like. Subjective experience is something that seems to exist, but it's impossible to define within an objectivist viewpoint. Not only are we bewildered by how we would produce consciousness, but we also have quite a bit of trouble defining it. Before we can ever replicate consciousness, we would first need to define the problem of what it's even made of. These attempts to define consciousness remain elusive with some better than others, but none being definitive. 
Since science needs to stay in the realm of what it can measure, physicalist descriptions of consciousness are more agreeable to the field. However, this doesn't always lead to being more reasonable. The book Consciousness Explained by philosopher Daniel Dennett outlines consciousness as principally an emergent phenomenon. Dennett says the subjective aspect of conscious minds is non-existent, and his definition of consciousness is the only coherent description for science. In other words, linear analysis ultimately concludes that your mind does not exist. Thankfully, multiple prominent neuroscientists have argued that subjective experience does actually exist. A popular criticism of Dennett's book was that the proper name should be explaining away consciousness. Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, despite its promises, has not been able to reproduce self-aware consciousness. AI has no problem dominating humans when it comes to focused intelligence, but flounders when trying to mimic the behavior of a six-year-old. A fundamental reason for this has been that the stuff that makes up the mind is not the same as the stuff that makes up algorithms. Artificial intelligence relies on rules and mathematics, whereas the mind applies understanding and meaning. Physicist and Nobel laureate Roger Penrose writes in the book Shadows of the Mind, A Search for the Missing Science of Consciousness, that understanding is not a computation. He demonstrates this mathematically by applying Gödel's incompleteness theorem. The theorem shows that there are claims in mathematics that are true but cannot be formally proven within that system. For example, a computer could play the game of Monopoly by following the rules, but it would not understand that this set of rules constitutes a game. Yet a person looking at the list of rules would easily deduce through understanding that these are instructions to a game. Penrose reasons that quantum mechanics may be the fundamental component of consciousness. In Penrose's words, we need a major revolution in our understanding of the physical world in order to accommodate consciousness. The most likely place, if we're not going to go outside of physics altogether, is in this big unknown, namely making sense of quantum mechanics. Penrose is not that far off to label quantum mechanics as a big unknown. It's because it's one of the most tested yet least understood fields of physics. One of the greatest physicists of all time, Richard Feynman, once stated, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. If quantum mechanics is the root of consciousness, then it certainly won't make the mystery any clearer for now. What is the universe? While science continues to unravel mysteries inside the universe, the question remains, what is outside of the universe? As Terence McKenna once quipped, modern science is based on the principle, give us one free miracle and we'll explain the rest. The one free miracle is the appearance of all the mass and energy in the universe and all the laws that govern it in a single instant from nothing. In the book, The Case Against Reality, How Evolution Hid the Truth from Our Eyes, Donald Hoffman says that the reality we perceive around us is not real, but rather a representation or interface to something else. Hoffman is a professor of cognitive science at UC Irvine and has spent the past three decades studying fields such as perception and artificial intelligence. According to Hoffman's computer simulation, when organisms iterate through evolution, they adopt not for perceiving truth, but rather for increasing survival and reproduction. In other words, seeing the truth might be a survival disadvantage, and those that distort the truth in the right way would be at an advantage. As a simple example of Hoffman's premise, consider playing your favorite video game. To win the game, you use your controller to move your character and complete the missions. Now consider if instead you only saw the millions of ones and zeros on the hard drive and you had to move the raw data instead. You would surely lose the game. 
Hoffman suggests that our perceptions of reality are not the real thing, but convenient compressions of underlying data that allow us to move more efficiently. While reality may present itself to us as shapes and forms, the underlying reality might just be a different substrate altogether. Princeton University theoretical physicist Nima Arkani Hamed is on a mission to refute the notion that space and time are fundamental blocks of reality. Arkani Hamed advocates that space and time do not constitute fundamental reality, but rather are emergent properties of something deeper. He notes that when a working theory of reality reaches the end of its usefulness, that working model starts to show flaws that suggest it needs to be entirely overturned. One of the flaws that he sees in the current model is in regards to the Planck length. In physics, the Planck length is the smallest possible measurement of space. Since space only goes down to this micro-resolution and does not go any further, Arkani Hamed concludes that space-time does not stop at this arbitrary point, but rather our models of space and time are lacking in precision. In his working theory, he states that a geometric object known as an amplituhedron is a fundamental structure that contains all of the information necessary to reconstruct space-time. Some yet unknown mechanism would unwrap the information contained in it and it would be projected as space-time. As a rough analogy, you can think of the amplituhedron as a movie reel and space-time as the movie projected on the screen. Dark matter is a theoretical form of matter that has been measured but has not yet been explained. It might seem like dark matter is not much to think about, but according to measurement, dark matter constitutes a whopping 85% of matter in the universe. The way scientists measure it is by comparing the total amount of gravitational pull versus the amount of observable matter. Where the amount of gravity is not explained by the amount of observable matter, we label that as dark matter. Then of course, if that were not strange enough, there is dark energy, which according to best estimates, comprises 68% of total energy in the observable universe. Dark energy is a theoretical force responsible for driving the accelerating expansion of the universe. It is measured as the difference between known energy and the amount of energy necessary to drive the observed expansion of the universe. What is the brain? When it comes to the brain, there is perhaps as much mystery surrounding it as there is consciousness and the universe. The brain should be easier to understand than the abstract conceptions of consciousness and the universe, but if experts agree on one thing, it is that the field has a long way to go. When Lu Chen, professor of neurosurgery, psychiatry, and behavioral sciences at Stanford University, was asked to give the state of research on the brain, she declared, we know very little about the brain. We know about connections, but we don't know how information is processed. Georgi Busaki, MD, PhD in neuroscience from New York University's School of Medicine, states in his book Inside Out, we are very far from the goal. Neuroscience is still in its infancy. Andrew Fink, PhD of neuroscience at Columbia University, stated in an interview about memory shifting in a brain that people are really desperate for theories. The field is immature enough conceptually that we're still at the point of collecting factlets and we're not really in a position to rule anything out. While we won't deep dive into an analysis here, we can be sure that the brain remains effectively undefined as a box in the three boxes conception of reality. What is reality? The simple answer to this question is we don't know. I won't get into all the different ways we can combine different ideas of what existence is here, but we can be sure the implications are endless. As knowledge progresses, what we find might require us to undergo dramatic paradigm shifts. Where will those big shifts lead us? 
That is the joy and the spirit of discovery. Let's not prematurely close off explanations based on what we think we know now. The way we conceptualize reality is likely to undergo several changes by the time we arrive at a more definitive answer.